Welcome back. The White House will launch a task force to focus on breakthroughs in artificial intelligence for federal agencies. The National Science Foundation will work with the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy to expand AI education and resources. Erwin Gianchandani is the Deputy Assistant Director for Computer and Information Science and Engineering at the National Science Foundation. He's co-chair of the National AI Research Resource Task Force. Erwin, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. What do you believe will be the biggest focus areas of this task force? Well, great to see you again, Francis. Thanks very much for having me. And I'm delighted to be able to talk a little bit about this task force. So uh, as you noted, uh, this task force is something that Congress actually called upon uh, NSF, as well as the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy to work together to establish. And over the course of an 18 to 24 month timeframe to really develop a roadmap for how we can try to get to a national AI research resource uh, at the end of the day. Now, let me just take a step back here for a second and note that when you think about artificial intelligence and the revolution that we're seeing in AI today, a lot of that is highly driven by access to unprecedented computational resources as well as access to data sets. So we're seeing computational resources of the form, uh, for example, the supercomputer that the National Science Foundation funded at the University of Texas, Austin, a couple of years ago, Frontera, uh, at the time the world's fastest supercomputer, as well as cloud computing resources, as well as resources at a campus level, individual universities and organizations as well. So this is really about how can we potentially stitch those resources together uh, and create a unified resource that can allow for researchers, faculty, students, and others uh, to really be able to experiment and drive innovations, both in terms of artificial intelligence, machine learning, knowledge representation, reasoning, and so forth, as well as in a number of different application areas from agriculture to transportation to, to education and so forth. Who will be your greatest stakeholders or shareholders across the government? It strikes me that the Chief Data Officers Council and the individual Chief Data Officers will be tremendously important to the work that you're about to undertake, Irwin. Well, absolutely. I think that we're looking to be able to partner with folks across the federal government, as well as folks in the in the private sector and in academia too. So when Congress established uh, or, or called for the establishment of this task force, they wanted the task force to comprise four members from government, four members from uh, academia and four members from private industry. And so you, if you look at the composition, that's exactly where we are today. And I think that was very intentional and, and, and very wise as well at the end of the day, because we do wanna be able to ensure that we bring in diverse perspectives uh, from across government, and that includes the CDOs. It also includes some of the foremost research funding agencies. Uh, NIST is a member of the task force to be able to think through security and privacy preserving techniques and capabilities as well. Um, but then also making sure that at the end of the day, we're representative of the broader research ecosystem across the country to include academe as well as private industry. Erwin, I can say this, I know you can't, when there are congressional mandates, you have congressional mandates. There are things that Congress expects you to do. How are you preparing this task force and the work ahead now to meet not just the compliance exercises that Congress wants you to undertake, but the spirit of it, to really prepare the government for AI excellence? So that's a great question, Francis. And I'll just say that I think if you look at the legislation uh, and, and, and what we're being charged to do, this is really something that uh, I think is, is very important and, and very bipartisan in nature, right? We are trying to be able to think through over the course of the next uh, 12 to 18 months, uh, the development of first an interim report and then a final report that will really get at what are the uh, key ingredients for a research resource. So starting to think through computational assets, thinking through data assets, software workflows as well, uh, to be able to run uh, uh, experiments, modeling and simulation on our resources. Um, thinking through the, the security and privacy issues, the user interfaces, and, and something that we often don't talk enough about, education and workforce development 
training the both the current generation and the future generation of, of experts when it comes to how do you interface with this type of a resource? How do you plug into this type of a resource? So I think that you know there are a lot of different stakeholders and constituencies that we have to ensure are reflected. We're going to have public meetings over the course of this summer and fall and into next year. Uh, we're also thinking about uh, putting out a request for information, an RFI, that will canvas broadly uh, a wide spectrum of stakeholders. We want all the great inputs that can then come together and be synthesized and harmonized through the work of this task force. We have less than a minute left, Erwin, and you anticipated my last question, which is what's the timeline look like for all your deliverables? Yeah, so, so the task force was officially constituted at the beginning of June. Uh, from that point forward, we have about a year to produce an interim report. So I would expect to have something in that realm sometime around next May or June timeframe. Uh, and then a final report that would be produced. And again, this is about trying to develop a roadmap uh, that would then be picked up and executed upon potentially down the road, but a final report that would be due about six months after that. So sometime next November, uh, October, November, December timeframe next fall. So fall of 2022. Erwin, thanks very much for joining me today. It's great to have you back. Thanks so much.